It's always a great time to start talking about electronics, so let's uh, uh, get into what drives the DR coils. I'm using these IGBTs called um, CM300DY-24H, made by PRX. You can find them made by Mitsubishi, you can find them online, they're going to run you somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, 30 to 50 bucks a piece. What this is, I don't know if you can see the little schematic on there, kind of hard to see on this screen, I don't know if you got it there, but it's basically two IGBT transistors. What's an IGBT? It's an insulated gate bipolar transistor. That basically means it's a giant transistor uh, that can handle high voltages and currents. Let's just put it that way. Um, if you think about it, inside your iPhone, there's probably, well, uh, somewhere north of a couple hundred million transistors um, in, the, in the processor alone. And then the Bluetooth has transistors, and, and, and there's, there's billions of transistors. This is two transistors, interesting as it may seem. The ones in your iPhone only handle little tiny currents um, that come from the battery and come from the the airwaves and the, the uh, radio frequencies and this thing is going to handle um, CM300 DY means this will handle it's rated for 300 amps at about 1200 volts so that's a lot of volts and amps and were you to touch that uh, and be grounded you would not be a happy camper um, in any case that's what we're going to use to run this now oddly enough we're going to use um, we're actually going to drive this way past its ratings. Um, uh, if for a very, very brief period of time, even though this is only rated at 300 amps, for very brief periods of time, this thing will handle, uh, in our case, it'll be handling thousands of amps, but just for very, very short periods of time, and voltages that exceed the, the, um, uh, the 1,200 volts. Uh, the key is doing it really fast so the thing doesn't get hot enough to burn up. Now there is a couple issues with these things. Um, some of these you can find, they actually have volt, uh, current limiters in them built in and you'll have to look online to figure out how to take the current limiters out. You want the current limiters removed because again we are going to be exceeding the ratings for these to make a Tesla coil. Um, is that dangerous? Nah, not really. I mean what it means is the thing will probably burn up if you run the Tesla coil wrong. But on the other hand, um, it's not some, you know, these are made for things like motor control and sensitive items. They're made to run x-ray machines and things like that. So this is not a sensitive application, so we don't have to worry about being within its parameters. Another interesting parameter of it is the drive voltage. So the 24H specifies that we got to drive this thing with 24 volts at least, and these are the inputs. Now there's two transistors in here, and each one has has its own two um, control uh, wires coming into it and we're going to wire it up so the control wires come out of our um, what it's called a GDT I'll show you that uh, that's a, a gate drive transformer that we gen up ourselves but basically what we're going to do is we're going to turn these transistors off uh, alternately on off on off alternately so one when one is on the other one's off and uh, that's what we're going to use a GDT to synchronize. Now, I guess the last thing I'll say about this thing is that uh, they're not made to run at very, very, very high frequencies. What do I mean by high frequencies? Well, um, you know, if you run this thing at 60 or 70 kilohertz, not megahertz, kilohertz, you're kind of at the max of what this can handle. Now, I, I had a friend who took the specs off of the... Um, the data sheet for this bad boy and said hey you know if I just take the rise time and the fall time and add them all together uh, looks like this thing could probably run at 500 kilohertz no problem uh, you know there's probably a universe in which you could try to do that but at the currents we're trying to to push around currents and voltages we're pushing around with this thing I, I don't think you're even going to get close to that 60 70 kilohertz maybe maybe 80 um, but the lower the frequency, the better for these guys. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to use two of these in a push-pull uh, fashion. The, there are two transistors in here that are set up as an inverter so that when, so that when the input signal is on, the, uh, the output signal is off and vice versa. And these are the three connections 
to that inverter. Now, you know, there's a little schematic on here, and I'm not going to draw it on my fingers or whatever, but um, uh, take my word for it, there is an inverter circuit in here. We, we set up a V plus and a V minus, so we set up a, a power supply and a ground, and then we provide an input signal, and in this case, the input signal is going to be um, uh, the, the, the pulsing that's circulating around our primary in our Tesla coil. And uh, we're going to alternately turn that on and off. Now what I'm going to do is that we're going to use two of these uh, ganged up with each other so that they're doing the opposite thing. So when one's on, the other one's off. When the other one's on, the other one's off. So we're going to have a total of four transistors. That's called a full bridge. This is a half bridge. You put two of them together, you make a full bridge. You can get more current through that way. Tesla coils are current-driven devices mostly, rather than voltage-driven devices. So you need uh, the more current, the better. So this is really half of the heart of the driver for our DR coil. Now I mentioned that what we're going to do is we're going to set up a positive and a ground voltage on this to bias it to start it off. And that voltage is going to come through a voltage doubler. We're going to take AC and then we're going to rectify it to DC, but we're going to increase the voltage with a doubler. In fact, at 120 volts, I should be able to get somewhere north of 300 volts DC. If I run 240 volts, I'll get somewhere north of 900 volts. I know that's more than double and there's square roots of two involved and whatnot. We can do the math and show you, but that really does happen. Now, the way you create a voltage doubler, you can Google it. Um, or at some point if anybody actually watches this video I'll show you how to do it but you take a couple of diodes a couple of high voltage diodes and some capacitors like I have over here and you gang them up and you create a situation where you're charging up the capacitors and not letting them discharge charging them up not letting them just discharge uh, and and by not letting them discharge I'm actually doubling the voltage across the two capacitors and that's how it works you can do it with four capacitors and get a quadrupler or a tripler um, this is a well-known circuit um, I'm using the Semcron Sempak thingies that I got from eBay you can find these in, in any of the industrial supply um, sites on eBay uh, what you've got here are two diodes back to back, so you know with a with a connection in the middle, and that enables me to set up the voltage doubler. So what I've done, and what this is not an unusual setup, as I've created the motor or the engine or the inverter for this thing. Um, thus, and what what I have here are two of the three, uh, two of the CM three hundreds, with the Semcron. Uh, wedged in the middle and some copper and what this is doing very very simply is I'm going to hook up AC to this to two separate points actually one point here and one point I've got to build and um, that will create the bias voltage for the transform for the transistors now I've got some capacitors here these are uh, shunt capacitors to prevent any kind of arc over when the thing's switching it's switching such high currents you don't want it to arc when it goes on and off and on and off um, so I've got these shunt capacitors here. I've got another one here just for good measure to uh, make sure I don't get any arcing off of the, uh, uh, the voltage doubler itself. And then I've got the control wires, eight of them coming in off of the CM300s. And I just for fun, I decided to put them through uh, something more convenient. So I've got a, I can, uh, I can tie in the output to the GDTs into here and, um, and make an, a much neater uh, installation. I've got these big copper bars. Um, these copper bars are going to be conducting DC mostly. This is the DC input. A um, lot of current. Made them big and lunky. Uh, don't have to be quite as big and lunky as that. The main thing is we want to keep them as short as possible because otherwise we'll create unnecessary inductance and there'll be oscillations here. We don't want it. These two connections, which are unconnected at the moment, this is where our connection to the primary will go. It'll go from the primary actually through the, um, through the load capacitors. Um, and uh, we'll show you how to do that. And so the primary is going to come in here. It's going to be a series circuit out of here into the capacitor bank, up into the primary circuit, and then back into here. And the AC is going to be connected to this point right there. And 
to a point that I've got yet to create. So I've got these two capacitors, these two electrolytics, which serve only to filter the AC into DC. I'm going to create, I'm going to machine myself a piece of copper to connect these together and then to allow me to, to um, tie in the other AC, uh, other end of AC. So AC will go from here to here, touching those two, and the output comes from here. It's all on a giant heat sink. Um, I made this a couple years ago, never used it, so it's going to be interesting. I'm going to try it out. Um, drilled and tapped uh, quarter by 20s, uh, and, and then there's some goop, some condu uh, thermal conducting goop under there. All right, so we'll get on with machining the uh, copper for the extra connection to that. Turn the music off if we're gonna do this. All right, I, I get the impression people would rather see drilling and tapping and I don't know, not me talking. So I'll just drill and tap. What I'm gonna do is try to make this bar that I can hook up to those two capacitors. Um, I just uh, faced it with a uh, carbide facing tool not sure that was such a great thing to do, but it's not really ultra high voltage. It's not going to, I mean, it's, it's got these little ridges in it, but I don't think that's a problem. And I, I got the, uh, 
I got all this uh, scarf off of it and so what I'm going to try to do here is just do simple drilling and tapping. Actually not even tapping, just drilling. And then I'm going to have to cut a little bit off the edge here. You'll see. Oh, that's bad. Let's straighten out the bit. Now let's see where we're at. Oh, nowhere near where we get to go. A little wonky. Well, this may be a good opportunity for me to use my my fixture plate. What I want to do is cut off a, an angle here, 45 or something like that, in order to when you when you see what I got to do is I got to have this avoid the other bus or have a massive short. So I need to trim that, and um, I don't feel like. I don't feel like rotating the um, vise to 45 degrees, but I've got this thing that I made up oh some time ago, and uh, it's a whole bunch of 10 by 32 tapped holes and a nice aluminum plate. So let's just see how this works. Let's see. I never I built it, never used it, so. Let's uh, see what we can get out of this here. We'll be using gloves, keep tearing up the fingers. Effective. I need another hold down. Let's put one. I should have thought of that up front. Put one here.
Okay. Not exactly smooth. Let me, let me give that another pass at a slightly tighter. That's a fail. Well, that's a fail. All right, let's try again. Let's tighten all these things down. Apparently, fixturing is everything. Let's get that out of there. I can see now. I got a nice. I got a nice edge. All right. Let's see how that size is up.
And just another quick one. I took the capacitor bank and I sandwiched it between two pieces of PVC. Now, this is not necessarily the greatest way to do this because I understand these things will get pretty hot. Now, in my experience, they never get hot, but who knows? Other guys put fans on them. I've heard people say that this particular type will explode uh, or burn up. I'm, I've not seen that. Of course, I don't run the coils for an hour at a clip, so I don't know. Um, anyway, it's really just a couple of pieces of PVC with some 5 16 bolts. Not a whole lot of excitement to that, so I didn't bother filming it. And now we can start getting an impression of... Um, what it's going to start looking like in there. So there's the there's the uh, actual motor, my inverter motor, and we'll have to figure out how to set that up. Here's a capacitor bank, and there's what we built the other day. Now I just got to get. Uh, I'm going to not use this one. So this is the one that was previously in service. I've got this uh, squirrel cage fan that my wife found. This might be a better solution than that. Um, we'll see. And I've got to take, this is the GDT, the gate drive transformer. I've got to take that off, pull that off of uh, these transistors here, take out the, um, the controller, and the 12 volt AC supply and uh, well that's uh, quite a lot more to do. There is no doubt that uh, trying to build these things while on camera takes a lot longer than trying to build them when you're not on camera. I had to take a break from building for a week um, and I got back to it and I started on a couple things yesterday and I kept going and before I know it I went pretty far. Okay, here's where we stand so far. What I started to do yesterday was to tie down all of the internals. So I just uh, squished these capacitors between these um, pieces of uh, PVC. There's probably a better way to do that. In fact, I'm going to switch capacitors if I, when I can find them. There are uh, there's a better category of caps than that. Um, Eurofarad SP 2550s, I believe. And uh, if, when I find some, I will buy them on eBay. Uh, right now, there's none available that I've been looking for, so I'll use my old standbys. I put some fans in the back. Um, there's the driver right here. Let's see if we can get down into it. And you can see maybe the connections. I don't know if that's too dark. And so basically all I did yesterday was bolt these things down, which is probably about as exciting to watch as paint dry. Uh, I've got the two circuits hooked up, the 12, the 120 volt here, and the main power that drives the coil itself. Um, the controller box is not nailed down yet. I've got the two sensors just sitting there. And I gotta find a better way to connect the wire to feed wire to the primary. And I took the side of the box off so that I could work on it. Uh, over here, what you see what I've done is um, there are three strings of parallel capacitors. They decided I would connect them separately. And I'm using this piece of Garolite there because that, that might get hot and it might melt the PVC. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And that's where we stand today. Oh, let me add uh, one thing here. So the 120 volt comes in, it drives the two fans in the back. And it also drives that transformer which steps it down to 24 volts, which is what we use for the uh, controller board itself. And um, as you see, I sweated the... Uh, primary connection in here to the right there to the um, to the IGBTs it comes out the other side goes in connected in here and 
and um, so you can follow the current flow from the primary through the IGBTs through these caps out the other side of the caps and back up through the primary to here so it's a series circuit and uh, all right let's see where we go from here <laughs>